So that transition, that is what it's about. And what, what we thought about then, or a starting point really in our project is that there's been sort of discussion about uh, technical fix, innovation, and of course it is a very important part, especially me coming from Sharmers, we think about graphene and other things that can be very important in this transition. But often there is a reaction. That is not enough. It has to be, you know, we also have to deal with our lifestyles because it, otherwise it really doesn't give rise to even more consumption. So often it has been, or we can see a debate with, and the second opinion is often about some kind of mistrust when it comes to technical change, that they almost achieve something against technical change or uh, innovation. So that, that we have seen for a while. So what we thought is, if we focus first on what people really want and need, what will that mean for sustainable development? Because there has to be some attractiveness in, in the transformation, in the same way as industrial society came about. It wasn't a master plan, it was not something that you know, was planned in any way, it was it developed. In order, thing to, in order to, for things to develop, it has to be some, something that we also want. And this is one example where the starting point was not the challenges when it comes to uh, uh, environment. And that was Bogota in Colombia. It was rather that he wanted to make it possible for people to be happy in the city. Both for people to be safe in traffic and be on like, <coughs> squares and play on the uh, sidewalks, but also for the rich people to be uh, in the commuting system and, 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 and to be safe, less crying and so on. And in that he developed th this kind of system. <coughs> and of course, one, one result of this was a, lot, a decrease in carbon dioxide emissions and other environmental effects. So that was the result. But when he received the Gatherer Award for sustainable, sustainable, sustainable Development, in his presentation, he never talked about environment at all. Never. He only talked about this justice, happiness, and all other things. So maybe there is a possibility. So in the project we are, we have now a different sub-project, and one is the bigger <coughs> one about redefining urban progress. What kind of theories do we have about urban progress? Are we aware of those theories? And what kind of indicators do we use to measure it? And that we do together with, uh, uh, with the city and the region. And we also in that project try to identify is there other path, other, put, other, other ways to work for this transition that we don't really understand yet as a local authority. You know, we often have our de uh, department and local authority and they are dealing and working in a certain way. But what is happening now is that we have this sharing economy, we have norms, that norm shifting patterns in society. Can that be reinforced in some way? Can, we, can the local authority help or not, uh, not, at least not hinder those kind of norm shifting patterns, activities? Can, can, can we introduce the vegetarian day in school in order to shift norms in the in government households or what will that mean? What kind of other activities and possibilities do we have? That is the first. Thing. The second project is about the future. What would it mean for us to live in that situation when we meet the goal of sustainability, at least the climate? What, what would it look like? And here we have done scenarios together with the Municipality of Gothenburg about low carbon Gothenburg in a back fashion. And we have done it from a, from a cons uh, consumption perspective, which means that we include air traffic for the people living in Gothenburg, for example. And things 
to use somewhere else. Decision models for, uh, for uh, use in, in, in those local authorities are very important. For example, when you build a road, what kind of decision models do you use? What kind of assumption do you use? What does that mean? Can that be challenged? That is about the third one. And the fourth one is about radical policies. This, uh, this congestion charges are then evaluated both when it comes to um, climate and environment issues, but also well-being before and after the introduction in Gothenburg. And it will be a seminar in June, you know, about that? 12th of June. 12th of June, I think it's on, on the website. It is on the website, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, I already talked about this project, about redefining projects, and these decision models, I just want to Describe the challenge in traffic in Sweden, for example. Here you have the goals in, in Sweden when it comes to carbon dioxide emission. And the blue one is if we do the desired investment, what would that mean? And that was the decision model's point to. And we are not well informed as customers in the system, so we need some kind of help. And, the, and this is a cost benefit analysis. And sorry, this is partly in Swedish, but it. <coughs> ASIC 4 is an old system, ASIC 5 is a new one. This is the benefit of saving one hour of personal tra travels for uh, cars. Before it was 100 crowns. If you say, you build a road and say one hour, you will save 100 crowns. And it was the same for bus and train. But you see, that has shifted in the new one. So you save less money if you build or save time for people traveling in uh, train and buses compared to a car. And that, of course, influenced the system. So we thought that this was really important. But it was even more important. Oh, sorry. This is a <laughs> room. <laughs> so, uh, this is, um, I can describe it. It just went away, this uh, last presentation. But, um, yeah, we have the P car, uh, and it seems like the plans for continuing uh, car kilometers per person in Sweden, um, if you, the plans are based on what has happened since I will say at least 30 years back, it's like this. That is the plan in all the models. Uh, while we see that if you take the last 10 years, it seems like it is like this gap in what is, seems like is happening now when it comes to car ownership and car driving and what is uh, planned for. And what will that mean for, for, for <coughs> these kind of models is very, very important because we build, as we did for with the nuclear power plants, we build too much, it seems like. And this low carbon Gothenburg, it is about uh, uh, the future scenarios. And this is the Swedish household, just as a background, use of energy per capita for different income groups. And you see that it seems like it's just increasing 8% more energy to 10% more income in Sweden, in Europe. But you also see that if you take the 10% of the household using less, energy with those 10% of using most energy. The difference in those, between those two groups are 350%. So it's a huge difference and you can ask if those are less happy than those. And what does that mean? And so we did scenarios and it has been published for the future, business as usual a really low carbon transition. And here you see that air traveling and food will be an important part of that low carbon future. And that is very much about <coughs> consumption perspective. So the consumption perspective is very important in uh, making those scenarios. And it has then been used in, in, um, in local authority, this method. And, and we also interviewed 
thousand individuals in Vesta land, and we figure out or we measure how much carbon dioxide they emit. You can see the ten percent of the Paris group is about fourteen tons. And we compare it also with subjective well-being. And what you see here is this group is other reasons for why the well-being is not very great. But you see that it seems like it is almost the same level. <coughs> and it doesn't really pay off in well-being to emit a lot of carbon dioxide. So this um, this is also in in, the, in that project to try to measure uh, also that part of it, the consumption. So that means that we um, we are in the same area of work as you are in transition of society and especially in the first one we, we are trying to figure out how to intervene in the system and how to um, actually make those arenas of transition work and what is the different um, uh, potential in doing that and we come back to that after the coffee with the discussion and I we have now coffee for 25 minutes so your I think Ylva uh, is responsible is there coffee outside? Should be. Yeah. Good. And then welcome back.